Hello everyone and welcome to my top 10 things new sim racers need to know before they hit the track for the very first time. I started in sim racing way back in late 2013 on the old Codemasters F1 games in this small little league and since then I've gone all the way up to the VRS GT World Championship on iRacing which for last season paid out a hundred grand for the series champion. So I've seen about just about everything in sim racing. I want to give a couple of tips to those just starting out their journey just today. In that time, I have learnt so much as a sim racer because it all comes down to technique, how you modulate your brake, your throttle, your steering inputs. Every little micro factor does make a difference at the end of the day. And if you get one of those habits wrong from the very, very start, it's very tricky to correct over the next few years. So I really want to make this so that all of you guys don't get into bad habits and can immediately get as quick as you can in sim racing. So why not? Let's just kick off with number one. So kicking things off with number one is laps, laps, and more laps. The thing that so many people underestimate is how much practice you need before going into your very first race on a new game, a new platform, or just, you know, a new series. You need to make sure you get all of those laps under your belt because for those new sim racers who are doing things for the very first time, when you are in a racing situation, you're going to be feeling the pressure a lot more when it comes to attacking and defending position because you're going to be so focused on that, you may miss a brake marker or may overshoot a corner, make a small mistake, oversteer the car, something. So getting that early lap in so you've got a good reference, a good muscle memory is so critical before your very first race. If you don't do that, then things will get very, very tricky. So what I recommend is before your very first race, get at least 50 laps under your belt, you know, before your first race in a new game or a new series. Make sure you get that mileage because every car is different, every track is different, every game is different. So every little one is going to require a little bit different of a nuance. So make sure you get used to every single one. Number two. Now you might have heard me reference brake markers there. What exactly is a brake marker if you are just starting out sim racing for the very first time? What a lot of sim racers or new beginners on any kind of game will try and do is they'll judge where the corner is and try and brake accordingly to the distance to the corner and they'll hit the brakes there. Now, that is okay in theory, but the issue is that you're going to be inconsistent. So some laps are going to break way too early, other laps way too late and send yourself swimming in the gravel traps for many, many corners. So the best thing to do is find a physical feature on the side of the track. This can be a braking marker board, which are the little polystyrene boards you'll see 200 meters, 100 meters, 150 written on them. They're a great, great reference and I highly recommend using them. But sometimes the braking position or a distance that you want to hit is a 75 meters. They don't have braking boards for 75 meters. So in those instances, look for a physical feature around the track if you can. This can be a particular marshal stand. This can be a tree on the side of the road, a little bit of a dirt patch on the side of the grass. This can be a break in the white line. This can be so many different things. I have used just about everything as a break mark. My favorite one, is going into, it's after the hairpin, the big braking right hander at Sebring. In that white line on the side of the track, for some reason there's just a little kink in the white line, this little painted section of the white line. I use that for my braking marker in the Sebring 12 hours. So anything you can find on the side of the track, it can be a brake marker. Use that, you can be a lot more consistent, you can have a reference every single lap. And if there is a time where you need to get past someone and make an overtake, well, you know you just have to break five meters later than that mark you've been doing previously. Rule number three, do what your mum says and drive safe. So many people try and make positions in the very first corner, break 50 meters too late and take out half the field. Don't get yourself a reputation for being that guy. Drive safe, drive smart, and just try not to make contact or make silly mistakes around other drivers. The best thing you can do is be slow and too careful when you're starting out. That's a good thing to be because so many games like Gran Turismo and iRacing, they'll have a safety rating feature. So if you're constantly getting involved in incidents, spinning your car, hitting walls, it's actually going to determine how what the races you can actually enter are. So if you're just bouncing into cars every second race, you're actually going to limit yourself in iRacing, for example, from driving the Formula 1 cars. You won't be allowed. In Gran Turismo, you won't be eligible for top split and being able to compete in the Gran Turismo World Tour races, which is a big deal. So drive smart, drive clean. It's the best way to go about it. And if that's not enough to say, well, I don't want to drive the F1 cars. I don't want to go to the Gran Turismo World Tours. If you're that guy that is crashing into people every single race, 
You're going to get yourself a reputation. People are going to drive differently around you, more cautiously. And you're going to give yourself a bad name. And people do talk. And that will eventually lead to you not getting team offers. Because people know what you have done in the past. I've seen that in the Australian community from some drivers. Who have literally locked themselves out of every single team. Don't be that guy. Give yourself the best chance of getting opportunities down the line. Number four. Get yourself involved in a racing league. Now, this one for me is a big one because it's one of the most beneficial ones you can do and it's what benefited me personally in sim racing the most. I started out, as I mentioned earlier, in an F1 2013 racing league. And with that, you get to race with the same group of drivers week in, week out, so you can see how you're actually developing as a driver. You, if you start the season and you're outside the top 10, and by the end of the season you've got a podium and you're competing for top fives regularly, that shows a trend in development that you're on the up. That is a really good trend to have and it's a great way to analyze your progress rather than looking at raw lap times because lap times change from round to round. But if you are able to progress through the league order from round to round, that does show a steady form of improvement against the same drivers. It will also teach you a bit more about your driving style as well. I very quickly learned that I'm quick at a Sebring, a Nordschleife, the really bumpy, aggressive circuits that you have to attack at. They're my kind of circuits, which I didn't think of initially. But when it comes to the smoother tracks, like a Silverstone or a Monza or a Spa, the more traditional Grand Prix circuits, that's where I struggle. And I learned all about that from competing in a league, because I could reference myself round to round where I was strong, where I was weak. It is such a beneficial thing to do. You will learn so much from joining a racing league. So out of all the tips on this list, this is probably the one I recommend the most. It just gives you such a good ceiling for improvement. Halfway there, number five, try all of the car and track combinations you can think of. When I first joined on iRacing, I wanted to be very quick in the Corvette C7 Daytona prototype. I drove the car, I was rubbish in it. But a car I didn't really want to drive, the Porsche 911 Cup car, I was actually pretty quick in, so being able to learn or develop in a lot of different cars is going to benefit you. So try them all, see where your strengths, where your weaknesses are as well, because they may not be what you quite expect. You might have been good in downforce cars previously, but if you switch to another sim, you might find yourself quick in you know, road cars, GT cars, something with a bit less downforce. So try different things, see where your strengths lie. Some will work well in some cars, some drivers can work well in every car, but for the most part, everyone has their niche, which allows you to extract just a little bit more than your competition can. So experiment, see what you can do in every single car, and take it from there. Number six, don't expect too much too early. A lot of drivers have this impression that they're a good driver, they're a quick driver, and if they just had a little bit more time, they could actually be extremely competitive. The issue with that, which is a fine mindset to have, but the issue is when you take that into your very first race, you qualify 35, uh, 35th out of 36 cars, and then your confidence is just destroyed. Make sure you don't set yourself up for failure. Small goals at the start and build your way up. So aim for, you know, to finish in the top 30. If you achieve that one week, go for a top 25 next week. If you miraculously luck into a top 10 in one of the rounds, don't expect to always be in the top 10 every single round from then on. Expect you might have got a little bit lucky and just slowly bring your goals up. Don't expect too much too soon because you'll destroy your confidence. And you won't really want to play the game again because it's just going to feel like you're going to tear yourself down every single time you do. So make sure you set your goals low and just slowly tick one off. Top 30 here, top 25 there, top 20 there. Build your way up that way. Don't go straight for race wins because it's not the best mindset to have. Right, number seven and a big talking point for a lot of people, and I'll probably do a separate video on this in the future as well, but just to tick it off now, equipment doesn't make you faster. Spending $1,000 on a steering wheel doesn't make you quicker. So if you are just starting out sim racing for the very, very first time, don't feel the need to spend on the biggest and greatest equipment. Get something like a Logitech G27, a Driving Force GT, something basic, something you can get for less than 200 Australian dollars. That will still give you more than a good enough feel of if you're going to enjoy sim racing if it's something you want to pursue in the future because it doesn't make you quicker. It will give you a slight little bit more detail so you can feel tire wear, you can feel grip differences, you can feel the better braking threshold of where you're going to pinch a brake as well. But for the most part, there's absolutely no gain. And I would say me going from a G29 to my Simicube 2 Pro that I'm currently using, I think I might have gained a tenth of a second. That's it. 
but through learning proper driving technique, getting yourself, you know, properly with steering inputs, with in, like throttle inputs, braking inputs, you can find a lot more than one tenth of a second. So get something cheap, get something basic, and build your pace up on that, and never, ever blame your equipment for losing a race. That's a horrible excuse. Never use it, because in the Porsche Esports Super Cup, one of the most competitive series there is in iRacing currently, one of my Logitech G Altus teammates, Tuomas Tartella, he uses the Driving Force GT, so no excuses. Number eight, find tutorials online. You're never too quick to learn something else, and make sure you're looking up reference videos online. So even if that's from the real world or the you know actual game that you're playing, find videos of other laps people have done previously. See what lines they're taking, what gears are they in, are they doing something different to you, braking later, braking earlier, carrying speed in a different way through corners. Try and learn what you can from videos. And if your game has a telemetry logger, I know Gran Turismo does, iRacing does, R Factor, a set of course competitioni, a set of course like the base one, a lot do have telemetry loggers. If they do, check for your braking inputs compared to a teammate or other drivers if they're able to supply telemetry to you. Being able to analyze that and see just where you're losing time compared to the other is such a critical factor. You don't need to go into like the big depths of telemetry to see where you're losing or gaining time. On the graphs, you'll be able to see they're braking 15 meters earlier than me here, but they're carrying more exit speed there and I'm losing two tenths, you know, on corner exit and I'm only gaining one tenth on corner entry. So you have to try and balance up where your wins and losses are and telemetry and videos online is a fantastic way to do that and it's great prep for league races as well. So that's one thing I highly recommend more people do. Never think you're too good to learn off of someone else. Number nine, and kind of carrying on that theme, lap times aren't everything. Don't ever feel like you need lap times to be competitive. Sure, they absolutely help, but at the end of the day, all a fastest lap time is going to get you is pole position and qualifying. In the race where there's 15 laps, it doesn't matter how quick you are if you're spinning every third lap. You lose eight seconds at least in a spin, so Unless you're five seconds a lap quicker than your opposition, you're not going to win that race. Consistency is everything. Focus on getting yourself to do a 15 lap run within a second of every single lap. So if your very first lap is a 20.3, make sure in those next 15 laps you don't go slower than a 21.3. That should be your goal. If you achieve that, tick that off. And go for another 15 lap run, try and keep it within 9 tenths. So if it's a 20.3, stay below a 21.2. Just keep doing that until you get as consistent as you can. The very best drivers can stay within 3 to 4 tenths every single lap. Obviously determining on tyre wear and fuel of course. But in the rookie races, they tend to be a lot shorter. So you won't be racing more than 15 minutes. So that shouldn't be a huge factor. So consistency should be pretty easy to keep if you know what you're doing. Hit your brake markers. Don't overdrive the car, don't slide the car around, attack too hard, and don't get embroiled too violently in battles if you can avoid it. Try and hit your lap times, that is going to help you so much more, and that's going to win you so much more races than outright lap time ever will, because it's consistency and not falling off the track, not making mistakes, that gets you to the checkered flag first. And finally, number 10, enjoy it. It's scientifically proven if you enjoy something, you learn quicker, you develop faster as well. And if you are learning quicker, you're developing faster, you're going to have more fun again. It's just an endless spiral. Enjoy it. Enjoy the process because you only get to learn how to drive as a sim racer once. I mean, you're absolutely always learning, but the fundamentals only happen once. Your first time trying to learn heel and toe, your first time trail breaking, your first time trying a new setup and adjusting and playing with all that things. As a driver, you only get that learning experience once. So make sure you enjoy it, have fun, and make the most of it because it is a fun time, you know, building your way through the ranks because eventually you'll get to a level where everyone kind of expects you to be at. For me personally, a lot of people expect me to always be running in the top five in GT races and around the top 10 in supercar races. That's what kind of people kind of have this expectation of me. But when I first started on R Racing and I was driving for a smaller team, the first time I was running in the top five, everyone lost their mind. They're like, who is this guy? How is he in the top five? It's because I was in that learning process. I was developing and I was kind of setting the bar for myself as well. Have fun doing that and sim racing will be so much more enjoyable for all of you. 
that's all from me guys it's my first week of this uh, little process that i'm doing all done streaming on monday wednesdays and fridays and youtube videos on tuesday and thursdays as well be sure to give any advice and i'd love to know what advice you would have liked before you started sim racing that you've now learned over your journey and career in the sport but otherwise for me guys i think that's just about it so i shall see you guys next week peace